Hi there, this is going to be a general love reading for the sign of Capricorn. Hello Capricorns, this is going to be for Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs as well as the cross watcher of the Capricorn. These are your November readings. So here we go. Capricorn. What do we got cooking? You got something cooking. You got something brewing. Wow, the fucking sun. Wow. Why is the sun a really big deal? Especially as your first card. Because the sun is the happiest card in the whole deck. It absolutely trumps everything. It's boom, Kanani. So the sun symbolizes happiness, joy, bliss, but it also can be about a reveal. Something comes to light. This can be extreme success. And it's healing as well, too. Now, the sun also symbolizes enlightenment light bulb moment, spiritual awakening, things of that sort. All of them being, as you may agree, beautiful and wonderful and amazing energy. The fucking sun is hallelujah, hallelujah. It is because it's like, it's almost, and I heard this when I was saying that, I heard, thank you, God, it's finally happening. Thank you, God, for answering my prayers. This could be an answered prayer. It's possible. Wow, the fucking Wheel of Fortune. Bitch, here we go. Jesus Christ, you have three major arcanas in a row. Wheel of Fortune and death. Scorpio. In the Scorpio season right now. That's transformation though, right? Scorpio, death. Death symbolizes the end of something. So it's quite obvious. It's the end of a cycle. A cycle ended and a new cycle is beginning. And in that cycle, the new one is this amazing fucking thing. It's the sun is shining now. The storm is past, if you will. Right? The storm is past. Whatever karmic lesson or karmic cycle that some of you may have been in, this indicates it's over. The wheel is turning. You passed it. This is almost like, hey, you passed it 100%. You know, you got a you passing grade. This is the seal of approval. Now, with the death card, it also indicates that this is like a transformation of self or of life. So it's something so life-changing that... And it's sudden, Knight of Wands. It's very sudden. It's it's overnight. Your life changes quickly in the blink of an eye. The moon. That's secrets. The moon is Pisces. The moon is cycles and phases. You got out of some kind of phase and cycle. It's and I believe it was a karmic one. You had some kind of a lesson. I mean, it's another major arcana too, but I want to point out that the sun and the moon is an eclipse and we just had the second eclipse of October yesterday, the 28th. And that's a fucking eclipse. The sun and the moon meet. Is that what this is? You finally meet someone? Because <sighs> you finally learned a karmic lesson and I believe that lesson was probably something about self-love. Capricorn, and I'm a Capricorn moon, so when I tell you I know Capricorn, I know Capricorn. They have a very tough, rough exterior. They're strictly business. They don't fuck around with their money, their time, because time is money. They don't fuck around with shit like that, right? Our love language is about financial stability and money. I mean, it's our love language. Gift giving and things of that sort. It's it's the way I show my, my love and affection for people. I buy them things. It's just the way it is. Of course, I am an Aquarius sun too, so that attributes to that because I'm so aloof, you know, emotionally. Um, but there's this energy coming through of, listen, you're normally very, very mm, guarded and sort of hard to get through, right? Mm, break the shell, very difficult to break. It's a hard nut to crack. But there's some sort of breakthrough here with the sun. And it is quite sudden because the Knight of Wands energy is exactly that. It's like break, it's like breaking through immediately. Like it's just one crack. Sudden, unexpected. 
And this is extreme sexual energy too, right? So it can be really lusty. Uh, it, it sometimes can be a one night stand. But I don't feel like it's just wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and it's just one and done. I'm not feeling that. But I do feel like it's this meeting of two souls and it being very lusty and very sexual and very a very physical attraction between two people that almost cannot be denied. It's palpable. You know what I mean? The whole room is electric because the two of you are in it. There's like an electricity between two fuckers. You have justice. That's a Libra. But justice can also be what you deserve. It also is karma. There is some kind of karmic lesson that you had to learn. Capricorns are stubborn too yeah they, and they're also very meticulous they and they dot all their i's and cross all their t's and they're very like that in business this is why a lot of them are so successful um they don't know how to release control right so they're very in control of everything I'm very everything's no because i want it like this because you're not going to know how i want to place this and you're not going to know what I want to do. it's like a control factor and this right here is out of your control because it just comes in suddenly high priestess and the star jesus christ uh, so many major arcanas major arcanas mean that they are universal energy that cannot be stopped it's a big shit well first of all the star is aquarius star is a wish it's destiny right it's a wish it's It's a wish that you don't see coming, that you don't see getting granted because, I mean, the high priestess is, of course, secrets. She's keeper of secrets. So were you the last to know this? Oh, Capricorns don't like that. Even Aquas don't like it. Scorpios don't like that either. <sighs> they don't like to be the last to know because they always want to know everything because they want to be in control of it. I want to, I want to control this. You're the last to know. You have no control over how this happens, how you meet this person. It just, uh, the universe, it's universal, destined, right, with the star. I mean, the star, if, if it's Aquarian energy, they're very aloof. They could be very emotionally detached. They're the water bearer. They, they just can pick up the water and fuck around with it and put it down and walk away from it and, and be all like, peace, see ya. Was someone here emotionally detached, aloof? But I also feel like the universe kept this a secret from you. Oh, why would they do that? Because you would overthink it and you with your control want to do it your way. And I did it my way. Okay, Frank Sinatra. No, not your way. Because you would have, dare we say, fuck it up. <laughs> and can it not be a surprise? Don't you want it to be a surprise? And you're saying, no, I do not. <laughs> Bro, my Capricorn moon be Capricorn. -y. I'm telling you, it really is. No sparks. Mm. It's kind of hard to tickle your fancy. It is. It's kind of hard to impress you. Not easily impressed. You're not easily, you're not like, oh, every man I see, every woman I see. It's, you're very hard to impress. You remind me of like Virgo energy. They're very nitpicky. Scorpios are the same way. Libras are like that too. Uh, aquas can be like that. Hard to please or nitpicky. Someone here is quite nitpicky and they don't necessarily feel sparks all the time with a lot of people. And then you meet a person, sun and the moon meet. And look at this. Now all of a sudden they're fucking discombobulated. Mind's blown. Total mind blowing. Melancholy. <sighs> I feel like in the past, some of you had a connection with a person that you thought they were it, 
but then ended up being no sparks. It dies out. It started up quickly, fast, quick, passionate. Oh my God, really hot and heavy. And it just died out. It's almost as if someone just blew out the candle immediately. Sparks and fireworks and all of a sudden just in the blink of an eye, it just all died out. And I think that could be quite discouraging when you think you had something and you get so excited and then it doesn't work out, you tend to shut down even more and get a little more discouraged. And that's what I feel like may have happened to some of you, where you did go through a period in the past of being extremely discouraged because it didn't work out with people that you thought it was supposed to be it. I was wrong. How did I not see it? And it is about beating yourself up too. That's the worst part. This melancholy is about you beating your own ass about it. Being hard on yourself. Oh, I should have saw it. Why didn't I see it? I see I knew it. Oh my God, I ignored the signs. Oh my God, my mom said she didn't think so. Oh my God, what, what the fuck? I'm smarter than that. Oh my God. Maybe you had to go through that lesson, right? Maybe that was your karmic lesson that you had to go through. That was it right there. But it is also a lesson for you to be vulnerable, which a lot of Capricorns are not. <laughs> They're not very vulnerable. They're a very hard nut to crack. You know, in the tarot deck, the Capricorn is depicted with the devil, which symbolizes restrictions and symbolizes obsession and addictions and, you know, all of those things being stuck to something. And I think that Capricorns can quite easily get really attached and stuck to things and be very restricted. And how can they restrict themselves? See, Capricorn is money, power, success. That's like their, that's like their fucking, um, that's their shit <laughs> money power success and you always have to be careful not to overindulge in all of them because it could be your demise becoming addicted to any of those things will be your demise it just is it's gonna it's gonna fucking it'll sink your ship doesn't mean you can have money power and success but it means that, you, it, that, that can't be all it is it, it's just it cannot be it's, it's deeper than that it's spiritual. It's soulful. Someone in the past year got really close and it didn't work out. And now the lesson has been learned. And something new comes in. Temptation. Free spirit. Opportunity. A new door opens. Uh, obsession. I We literally just talked about the obsession. I told you, you have to be careful of that. Someone's really tempted to go through this new door. But they're nervous about that because they're, they're saying, last time I just, say la vie. Last time I just threw caution to the wind. Last time that I was just free-spirited about this i got my fucking heart broken and i was disappointed i couldn't get over the motherfucker i couldn't get over what they did to me i couldn't stop thinking about that sometimes it's not even about us being obsessed with the person still and thinking about the person but we be obsessed about how the fuck they did us wrong how they had the goddamn audacity to even pull some shit on us and sometimes we can't get that shit out of our fucking head we keep replaying the scenario of like oh my god i was looking like boo boo the clown's wife because if he a clown, you a clown too. And, and we start thinking about shit like that. Right? We go, oh my God, this motherfucker. Oh my God. So sometimes it's not about being obsessed with the person still. But it's the obsessiveness of why did I let that happen? How come I didn't see the signs sooner? Why? 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 How, what the fuck? Beating up, like I said, beating your own ass. There is... The sun, right? This light at the end of this tunnel. Oh my God. And there it fucking is, bitch. There it fucking is. Union. Vows. Twin flame. Soulmate. There it is. <sighs> Bet you thought. <coughs> Bet you thought it wasn't going to happen. Bet you was really discouraged after the last one you thought was going to be it or the one before that you thought was going to be it. See, you won't know this one coming in because the universe is just going to throw them in your path. 
or it will just happen just watch when it does too because what's beautiful about the universe is that they just know how to do it and when to do it and the perfect timing to do it you have union twice because the bottom of the deck is infinity union abundance eternity uh you think it's union coming in Union with self first, obviously, self-love. Learning that lesson to love the fuck out of yourself and knowing what you deserve. Treating yourself well. Not being codependent. Not being freaking overly self-sacrificial either because that's teetering on the other end of it. Self-love means I know what I deserve and I'm not going to settle. You know, you also have poison. Remember we talked about that. The, the money, power, success, and even sex too. Um, it could be the demise for most people, but especially Capricorns, because Capricorns love power. They love sex, uh, success, and money, and sex too. But um, this poison is like being careful. Little sips, little sips, okay? Take it in little, little doses. Whatever this is, it's that kind of a reminder. Remember the intoxication? <clears throat> actually libra had that card intoxication i remember that too there could be a connection there between you and libra it doesn't have to be but it could uh, like i tell you guys you should really watch all 12 signs if any of them resonate with you regardless of what your fucking sign is because you never know you might be watching a sign for a person who's that's going to be your counterpart sign and you don't even know well why do i feel well i want to watch libra i don't know any libras i don't have libra in my chart there's a reason why you want to watch Libra. There's a reason why you want to watch all 12 because they're all connected anyway. Uh, really, right? Anyways, we're going to get into your extended. Below this video, click the word more. It's going to bring up all my links. First, I'm going to take you to my website, saltwaterheroestarot.com. It's going to be in the extended reading section in the November readings, okay? So I'll catch you there. Thank you for all of your likes, your shares, and your subscriptions here on YouTube. I love you.